Welcome to the Giga program session, information session. I'm Tatsuya Hagino of the Faculty of Environment Information Study. And uh, today I'm facilitating this session. And today we have four faculty members, including me, and we will have three students coming, our, our current Giga students. So we would like to give you a lot of information for today. First of all, let's ask the, our faculty staff to introduce yourself. Wada sensei. Hello, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Tatsuma Wada. I'm a professor of policy management. Uh, my area of expertise is economics. Hi everybody, I'm Miki Akiyama, a professor at the Faculty of Environment and Information Studies. My background is public health and health communication, and I'm particularly interested in achieving health and well-being of people in a community setting. And I'm Associate Professor Rod Van Meter of the Faculty of Environment and Information Studies, and I'm also Vice Dean of the Graduate School of Media and Governance. And my research specialty these days is quantum computing and quantum networking. Thank you very much. Then this is the today's outline. And first of all, we'll introduce the KO University, what KO University is, and what SSC, and about the GIGA program. Then we have two faculties, Faculty of Policy Management, the Faculty of Environment Studies, and then our main maybe thing is about Ken Kai. Uh, it is our core of the curriculum. So the we'll introduce uh, several SSC research seminars, and then we'll the invite three students for the GIGA student and we'll see what they are doing or we can ask about their student life. And later on we have a Q&A so you can still send us Q&A probably questions if you have. So the let's move on to the first session about the introduce home of the Keio University. Keio University of course you may know about we are the oldest university in Japan founded in 1858 by this person Yukichi Fukuzawa. The yes and we are keeping his spirit. The first most important one is the practical learning or the independence or self-respect or learning while teaching or teaching while learning. So we are uh, still keeping those spirits of him. And this is some of the, like for the speech, actually we have something called Meta Public Speaking House where everybody can come to say whatever they want to do. So the, we'd like some discussion to solve a lot of problems. And we have all the libraries in the Mita campus. Anyway, we are the oldest institute of higher education in Japan. And this is the location. We are uh, around Tokyo areas. We have somehow, unfortunately, th uh, distributed campuses. Three in Tokyo area, three in Kananga prefecture. And we have 10 under faculties, letters, economics, law, business commerce in Mita campus, school of medicine in Shinanomachi, science and technology, Yagami campus, and here in Shona Fujita campus, uh, policy management, environment, information studies, nursing and medical care here. And pharmacy, re our recent addition is in Shiba Kyoris. And we have 14 graduate schools, so we, you can have a lot of opportunities to study a lot of subjects. And K University, about the ranking. We are number one for granting aid for scientific research as for the Japanese private universities. Also the first in the number of CEOs of the companies that are listed in the first section of the Tokyo Stock Exchange. Also we are number one of the female faculty members and so on. So we uh, have a lot of number one in Keio University. And our global network, we have a history of 160 years. So the, we have 370,000 alumni actively in all areas of society. We have something called Mitakai. And wherever you go, all over the world, we have a Mitakai. Also in a company, if you uh, enter, then there is a Mitakai, so they will help. So 800 domestic, 70 overseas alumni organization are there. And our alumni include two astronauts, or three prime ministers, or 100 CEOs of foreign affiliated companies, and so on. Let's see what's shown on Fujita campus. Bamita Sensei, can you explain about the uh, uh, Shona Fujita campus? Sorry, to, to see the drones? No. <laughs> Let's see. Yes, Bamita <laughs> Sensei, please. All right. You want to go back and try the video or not? That's right. I'm trying. Yes. No. Okay. All right. We're not getting <laughs> the video. Like. Okay. So let's tell you about it, about the uh, SFC approach to learning. Then, of course, you take classes. That's an important part of what you're doing here. But we have 
what, what I call the multimodal learning approach to learning here. So you're going to learn in the classroom, and you're going to learn in the research seminar or the Kinku Kai, which we're going to talk about quite a bit more later. But you can also learn by working with faculty on their research projects and by going out and doing internships in industry and working in trade shows and working in the community for a variety, in a variety of different ways. So learning is about much more than just what's taking place in the classroom. And in fact, part of what we're trying to instill is a lifelong pattern of learning for you. Part of what we're trying to uh, achieve in terms of you know the, the buzzwords we like to use, uh, borderless, interdisciplinary, issue-oriented, all of that's great. Um, the real philosophy we're trying to instill in people is they're at the bottom, identifying problems and finding their solutions, which in Japanese we call this mondai hakken, mondai kaiketsu, problem discovery and problem solving. Back to you. Okay, let me tell you a little more about this. Yeah. Yes, yes, see. So you can see in the upper left there the uh, internships. We send students out to companies all, or, all around the world uh, uh, as well as here, here in Japan, sometimes for a few weeks at a time, sometimes for as much as an entire year for internships. We send go we've sent students recently to IBM and Google and other places. Um, in the middle, research camps that are focused on a particular research topic. That particular photo is of a summer camp focused on quantum computing that I was at and some of my students were at uh, a number of years ago. In the upper right hand corner, what I mentioned, uh, trade show technical staff. ShowNet, for example, is one of the largest internet equipment trade shows anywhere on the planet and it happens every June. And the team that runs the network on the show floor often includes both faculty and students from, from uh, Shonan Fujisawa campus. And as you see in the lower left-hand corner, there's field work, um, which I, I believe this particular photo is actually probably in Congo. Is that right? Mm -hmm. This is probably from uh, Hasebeken, who, who uh, does work in uh, Congo as, we, as uh, one, of the, one of the areas that they work in. Okay, thank you very much, Bamita-sensei. Uh, and this is uh, some of the SS characteristics, uh, borderless or interdisciplinary and issue-oriented. In uh, for you to understand easily, uh, we set, somehow divided the faculty environment in five areas, design engineering or uh, novel computing, bioscience, environmental design, human environment, also for the pol policy management, uh, urban region strategy, business administration, international strategy, uh, social innovation, and policy design. What is unique about uh, the water sensor? Can you explain a little bit about the? Is there any distinction between uh, between the two faculties? <laughs> well, it's a uh, uh, yes, yeah. It's a it's it's a really hard question because the the part of the answer is yes, and a part of the answer uh, to that question is no. Yes, uh, because we are uh, dealing with uh, different uh, uh, the approach approach. Uh, uh, what what I mean is like uh, uh, the discipline. For example, uh, policy management. Uh, we utilize uh, uh, the field of studies such as economics and political science and uh, laws and what have you. And on the other hand, the faculty of environment information studies. Um, it's more like uh, a natural science approach, uh, such as technology, uh, focusing on technology uh, or as a, a science. Um, but uh, the, uh, the truth is that the student can uh, take uh, uh, courses from two uh, faculties. So um, that's why I say the part of the answer to that question is no. Yes, that, that's right. Yes, we can take, uh, students can take any kind of subject. Or we even encourage, I think, to take the both kind of faculties uh, subjects, like the some maybe studying about the law, uh, as well as the computer technology, and so on. I think that kind of mixture is very important to show on the campus. Yeah, the distinction probably matters more to the faculty than it does to the students. You know, the, the faculty are sort of clustered in one area or the other, but the, the students work across both all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is the curriculum structure. Vamita, can you explain a little bit about the curriculum structure? So it's normal in Japanese universities for students to take classes for their first three years then in their fourth year, they join a professor's research group, they execute some sort of project, and they write a bachelor's thesis on, on, that, on that project. At our campus, that's actually extended quite a bit, and students typically join our research groups 
starting in their second year, their sophomore year. They're in the middle of the upper part where it says seminar. That's also what we call the Kinku Kai. And students can and do come and join our uh, Kinku Kai starting all the way from their freshman year. I tell incoming students that over the course of their four years that half of their learning is going to take place in the classroom and half of it's going to take place in the Kinku Kai and 90% of their growing up is going to take place in the Kinku Kai because you're responsible for finding your own problem, defining the problem, collecting whatever resources and whatever knowledge you need to do it and uh, actually executing the problem and then communicating the results to, to the other people as well. I love it. It's a, it's a really hands-on way of working with the students and it gives us a lot of face-to-face uh, -face time with the students. So that's the single most important distinction in how we teach and, and probably the single most unique factor about uh, SFC. Can you also explain about the fast track options for the graduation, what that mean? Or well. Of course, there's, there's a, there are a set of requirements you have, you have to fulfill in order to graduate, um, one of which is just the total number of units that you have to collect. If you take a full load, the maximum load of uh, courses as you go, you'll find that, that you're actually making progress toward, toward graduation a little bit faster than, than uh, completing in actually four years. And so it's actually possible to complete in uh, three and a half years instead of uh, four on um, a uh, sort of a reasonable schedule. It's actually also possible if you are accepted into a special program to finish both a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in four years. That means you're going to have to finish all of the requirements for your undergrad degree in three years, including doing your uh, graduation project, and then you follow on with compressing the classes for a master's degree and doing the research and the thesis for the master's degree into the fourth year. It's a very tough program, and you really have to thread the needle very, very finely in order in order to achieve this. So it's literally you know, a project that, that or a program that, that's for one or two, just a small number of students a year. It's not something that, that we have you know, hundreds of students in. But graduating in three and a half years is very straightforward, uh, if that's what you want to do. And that would also put you on to graduating in March, which, work, which merges uh, well with working in Japanese companies or going on to Japanese graduate schools as well. Okay, thank you very much. And yes, and of course, the we have a lot of English lectures. I, th I think every year, I think about 1,000 courses offered in Shona Fujita campus, and 25%, 250 of them are actually offered in English. And actually, for the graduation, you only need about 50 of them. So there are quite a, a lot of opportunity for study uh, a lot of subjects in English. And let's move on to somehow more detail about the uh, GigaProm distinctions. And of course, the uh, application can be completed in your home country. And courses are conducted in English. And if you complete some part of the uh, Giga courses, about 40 credit, then we'll issue the Giga certificate even before you graduate so that you can use that you have studied some English, the courses in English and use it to uh, get into a job or something like that. Now we'd like to move on to the more detail about uh, each faculties or s and the seminars. And first of all, about the policy management. What does Sensei? Yeah. Okay. All right. So today we are facing a lot of problems such as income inequality and regional tensions and trade wars. So those are very difficult questions to solve because they are very complicated in that they involve the differences in people's uh, value and culture and the historical background. So therefore, solving those problems uh, requires uh, the knowledge and understanding of complex nature of those uh, problems. Uh, so faculty of policy management uh, provide a student with the right environment for learning the way to tackle difficult problems uh, by offering uh, interdisciplinary approach that include laws, study of laws, and economics, and social science, and other political, political, political science, and other uh, field. Okay, so, uh, so, uh, so now uh, let's talk about uh, some of the Kenkyu Kai. Let's take a look at Kenkyu Kai. So first one is Jimbo Kenkyu Kai, Jimbo Labo. 
So this is about uh, uh, international security and uh, geo. So understanding geopolitics is very important because national security is uh, top of the issue for many countries. So first, uh, you need to understand what kind of problems are uh, we are facing. Right, uh, that we are facing what kind of problems nowadays uh, by learning uh, geopolitical situation and also national security issues. Uh, I like to say that I yeah. really we see Jimbo Sensei on TV a lot. Oh yeah, I, that's right. But I hate seeing Jimbo Sensei on TV because it usually means there's some there's some sort of incident going on in the East Asia. Uh, is something is going on the, the, yeah, the North Korea also, yeah. or, or, or uh, some, something <laughs> of that nature. Right, and uh, yes, yeah, so, so but uh, that means he's a very important person and uh, he is very knowledgeable. knowledgeable. And uh, let's move on. Next one. Uh, next one is Shimpo uh, Lab. Uh, Hi. So yeah, th today our world is uh, dependent of internet, and the internet is a very important part of our lives. But uh, existing law system, legal system, is not. I mean, it doesn't doesn't cover uh, the field such as private internet privacy or uh, liability or responsibility of people who use the internet. So in this lab, simple lab. Uh, so you will learn and how to make uh, a legal system uh, suitable for our uh, internet society. Any comment? No? <laughs> no? Carry on? Okay, so uh, let me talk about the next one, uh, Cochlear Lab. Uh, Cochlear Lab is about creating a new business. So creating a new business is a very exciting thing, for, especially for younger people. Um, but uh, so you, can, you, you cannot start with enough knowledge and the skills. So by joining uh, Cochlear Lab, uh, you will learn, you will earn, uh, gain the knowledge and the skills of uh, creating a new business. And uh, most likely, new business is related to internet business, probably. That's what, that's what I guess. Any comment? Uh, there are a lot of actually giga students interested in oh, the yeah, business right. administration of those areas. And a lot of actually studying in Cochlear Sensei Lab. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the and the last yeah. one is Yours. mine. Yes, yeah. my. Uh, so, like I said, uh, my area of expertise is economics, and uh, in this lab, uh, you need to learn econometrics, which is advanced statistics. Because so, using econometrics skill uh, can help you uh, uh, helps you understand uh, real world. For example, I'm using this example uh, many times. So, so what's going to happen if the price of crude oil goes up? Uh, what's going to happen when the price of crude oil goes down? Uh, the question is, the, the effect of those two events are symmetric or not? Uh, yes, so you will find out when you actually use a computer and the data and uh, using skills of econometrics. So that's a very exciting topic. All right, so now uh, let me pass on to uh, Akiyama-sensei. Uh, Akiyama oh, yes. Can you explain a little bit about environment infrastructure first and mm. then to okay. the seminars? Yes. The Faculty of uh, Environment and Information Study is also aiming to solve a wide range of problems in the society, but we are more based on technology, design, and science. Well, this slide is trying to classify and organize various research fields in five pillars, but in reality, all of these research fields in both faculties are actually mixed and interconnected. And we've been discussing, as we've discussed earlier, all, I mean, students are the ones who synthesize multiple disciplines. You know, they connect and combine whichever they think they need for their problem solving. Now let's move on to Kenkyu Kai introduction. Okay, I'm pleased to introduce health science perspective well, in the, in the Faculty of Environment and Information Studies. And one of the booming research field at SFC Health Science is neuroscience. So there are several professors who are energetic and enthusiastic, enthusiastic in the field of neuroscience. For example, Professor Aoyama is specializing in the measurement of brain functions utilizing MRI, MEG and other equipments, combining mathematical model of data analysis. Professor Ushiyama, on the other hand, is a specialist of neurophysiology, which is a study of nervous system and body movement functioning. 
and his research field uh, covers athlete's performance and new rehab method of stroke patients using brain-machine interface. And finally, uh, Professor Fuji is specializing in neural music. He's a neuroscientist, but at the same time, he's a professional drummer, and he has been doing research on skilled musicians and how you know the music has been processed in their brain. It's very interesting. And besides these guys, we have many other professors in the field of health science doing very unique researches. One example is the next slide. Professor Kuroda, uh, he's a bioscientist. Well, he's famous researcher in embryology, which studies development of creatures, including animals and human beings. Well, his laboratory uses African clawed frog, you know, which is a picture on the left side. And it's an ideal animal to study embryology as well as a useful model to study disease development of human body. Our health science pro program imply from micro to macro approach. Uh, for example, uh, molecular biology, neuroscience, cognitive science, um, psychology, epidemiology, and other social science, including environmental health science. And let's move on to my Kinkyu guy. <laughs> my Kinkyu guy is focusing on health promotion from communication perspective. So after learning basic theory and concepts of health communication, well, students conduct their own uh, projects. Well, they design program to promote you know health and well-being of people in different field. And this summer, particularly, Akiyama Kenkyukai collaborated with Oki Kenkyukai, which is a group of people doing research in disaster management and disaster communication. So students of both Kenkyukai, uh, they uh, deeply discussed and they uh, prepared materials and they planned and executed the, the workshop for children, the elementary school uh, children in Tsuroka City, Yamagata Prefecture, where a KO Tsuroka campus is located. And workshop was really successful and it was very, very fun. You know, the, the students wrote their uh, script and they played theater and, and they made quiz and games and they also, you know, taught uh, dancing and it was really fun. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, Professor Yan is the leading professor at GIS, Geographic Information Sciences, Urban and Regional Environment, and Science of Sustainability. So recently, he's working at project on design-led approach for sustainable urbanization global initiative. The name is Food, Water, Energy, Nexus, Cross Global Cities. You have. Uh, anything to add for Professor Yan? No, but but uh, the the, uh, the picture in the upper right there, <coughs> excuse me, is one of the things they demoed in, in uh, at ORF. But uh, it's a, a a model that allows you to really automatically see what the topography of a system is actually like in both three dimensions and, uh, and the way a topographic mer uh, map works. So it's very cool. They do an extensive field work, you know, in China, you know, and I mean, local side of Japan and all over the world. So let's move on to the next slide. Uh, yes, Pamita says, can you explain a little bit about, about the Tanaka Lab and so on? Sure. All right. So Hirio Tanaka brought the concept of a fab lab to, to Japan. And maybe some of you have used 3D printers. And I have a couple of things here that I have made using 3D printers or that my students have made using 3D printers. What is it? The, uh, what is this? Well, this is actually a representation of a mathematical function that, that, that um, one of my students made in a class I taught on optimization theory two or three years ago. But the, uh, the other kinds of things they do, they work not only with 3D printers, but they also work with paper cutters and wood cutters and various sorts of things. And not only are they actually working with the 3D printers and using them to design things, but they're also investigating the impacts on society of the, the devices of, of having home printers. We call this personal fabrication or the new buzzword these days is social fabrication. And they're actually also not just 
even working with these things. They're actually building some of their own, and they may work on on devices as large as this. So this was actually printed using a 3D printer that uh, Hiroya Tanaka and his lab uh, helped to develop. And this particular device, actually, or gadget, represents what is the. It? What is it? This is the this is the crystalline structure of either silicon or diamond. It's the same arrangement of atoms in, in this. And so we made this when we were talking about how the the, the size of transistors in, in computer chips is shrinking. We made this as a model to demonstrate to people so they could talk to it. So this is how the atoms are arranged in, in silicon, you know, the same kind of material that's in your the computer chips in your cell phone or your or your uh, laptop. And here you printed that for us. <laughs> With uh, with uh, the help of one of my uh, students, so in my King Kai, actually, we're working on quantum computing and quantum networking. You may have been hearing about quantum computing; it's just all over the news the last couple of years, and it's an important field. I think it's the most transformative field in all of science and technology for the first half of the 21st century. So I think it's absolutely critical to do. One of the reasons we became interested in it actually is because the transistors in your existing systems, your existing computers and cell phones, they're getting smaller every year. And we've gotten to the point where you're literally talking about transistors that have only a handful of atoms in them. And so how, how do we go on to build computing systems that, that will help us as we, we reach the limits of those technologies? That's what we're working on. And we have more Kenkyu Kai's, I think. Yes, the, there are a lot, actually. And we have about 55 Kenkyu Kai now available for non Japanese speaking students. So there, there are quite a lot of chance for going, uh, the studying a lot of subjects, I think. Yes, and as we said, it's really the heart of the education system here. So, so people often ask us. If I join policy management, what am I going to major in? Or if I join environment and information studies, what am I going to major in? Your degree, the piece of paper you get at the end, will say either policy management or environment and information studies, depending on which one you're admitted to. But what really determines the quality and depth of, of, of what you learn and the specific area where, where you specialize is really the Kenkyu Kai you join. So that's, that's really the, the single thing that's going to most determine what your experience as an SFC student is like. And we already mentioned about ORF. Akiyama sensei, can you explain a little bit of ORF? Or? No. Uh, Bamita sensei. You want me to do yeah. it? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So ORF, uh, last Thursday and Friday, we had our annual open research forum, which is our big annual exhibition. It's the single biggest event on the calendar uh, every year. Thousands of people come. You can see there in, in the middle a couple of pictures of sort of the exhibition space. Every one of the Kenkyukai, or almost every one of the Kenkyukai, puts on some sort of exhibit. Sometimes it's just a poster. Sometimes it's something that, that, that visitors can actively participate in. Sometimes it's a, a demonstration of software or something they have built. Um, it's, a, it's a tremendous amount of fun, and, and it's a tremendous amount of work as well, and it's a great learning experience. And, and this, this year, year we, we have yeah. something called pitch. Yeah, <laughs> I can't it's, a, it's a new, new, right? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I didn't, I, I didn't do this one, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. I only participated for the exhibition, but uh, I think this year we had a new program. Uh, all professors and some researchers uh, gave a short speech pitch note. Sometimes, uh, some for some of the labs, it was actually done by some of the students, which was mm -hmm. very, very nice. Yeah. So you did uh, one or? Yes, I, I did one. <laughs> it was a great experience. It's really hard trying trying to condense down your entire research field to a 12-minute presentation that, that, that will attract uh, people. But uh, you know, the, uh, it seemed like both the people who participated in it and the, people, and the uh, visitors uh, really enjoyed it. Now let's see some of the outstanding student research. Uh, Akiyama says, can you explain this one? No. Uh, yeah, Rod, Rod. Going to <laughs> okay, I'm going to take this one. So <laughs> Professor Narakawa is a uh, design professor, and one of his students submitted the design for a soccer stadium to a 
design competition uh, known as the, and received an award for it from uh, from what's called design Rev review. Um, the uh, the name of the stadium design that he developed was uh, Urban Weaver, and you can see if you look at the picture sort of closely, it looks like something being uh, woven. In fact, uh, Professor Akiyama said when we were looking at the pictures earlier that she initially mistook what was there for for, yeah. for an actual. Uh, yeah. I thought this, loom. this is a weaving machine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So this is, this is actually fairly common for our, for our students to win awards. You know, we, we, in the context of the Kenkyukai, you go in and you take on what's a relatively large project. It can develop over the course of multiple years as your skills develop. And in the end, it's, uh, many of our students go on to win awards in, in competitions both uh, domestically and internationally. Next one as well. Oh, this is the inter, uh, Inter-International Science and Engineering Fair. Who knows it? <laughs> So I think this is actually a couple of students who won awards on their way into SFC. So, so the, uh, the Intel Science Fair is primarily targeted at high school students uh, internationally. And for example, one of the students uh, mentioned there on the left, um, <coughs> he won, she won? She, the, she won for, uh, uh, yes, she won for her work with silkworms. And in fact, what she did is she raised silkworms on a diet of material that includes colored chemicals that can be used for, for the dyes. And so, so the silkworms actually produced silk that was inherently colored rather than taking blank white silk and dyeing it after, after the uh, silkworms are done with it. It's very interesting. interesting. Mm -hmm. Next one. I love this particular project. This is actually a really good example of what an SFC student is like. This is from Professor Ogi's lab. Uh, Ogi Sensei is in uh, specializes in uh, biomechanics, and he's a good example of what our faculty are like, because he's interested in something involving society. In this case, uh, sports, but he also has has uh, a real affinity for technology. So he and his students often build sensor systems that can help <laughs> either measure the performance of athletes or in some cases actually help them perform wh what it is they're doing. In this particular case, one of his students was actually a member of the Japanese Olympic team for the Rio Olympics. When was Rio? Was that two years ago? Or was that lo no, longer ago than two, that? Two years ago, yeah. Two years, two ago, years ago, right? So his student was on the, uh, the Rio Olympic team on trampoline. And if, you've, if you're thinking trampoline like in your backyard at home, you, you have no idea what these people are doing. The, these people are, uh, trampoline athletes are going seven to eight meters in the air above the trampoline while they, while they are performing. It's like, you know, the, like the high dive, like the diving off the 10 meter board. They're doing amazing things. So his student actually developed a biomechanical model, you know, attached sensors to his body and measured the forces and developed a biomechanical model of the forces that are actually exerted on your body while, while you're uh, performing these uh, acts in, in uh, competition. So it's a very SFC kind of work. It's very cool, uh, very, very nice piece of work. And Ogi Sensei's lab is now developing, you know, other equipments for the Tokyo Olympic, which is coming in the year 2020. Mm -hmm. So it's really exciting. So more research works are coming out. Yeah, Thanks. yeah one of my favorite, uh, actually, is a project from his lab is uh, is a system they developed to help a, a blind swimmer stay in their lane. So so it's actually helping uh, swimmers who are participating in the Paralympics. So helping people in a very very positive way. And this one, the Wada Sensei, can you explain? Yes, uh, this one is uh, about applied economics. So the question is, uh, what makes a home team uh, gain some advantage ov over guest team? So when uh, look at the soccer team in Japan Professional League J J1 uh, J League, uh, so it seems like uh, home team always has some uh, some sort of advantage. So the question is. Uh, is there any uh, any factor other than being uh, the the home team uh, to uh, for for those uh, those t home team to uh, win in a soccer game? So th this is applied economics uh, in that uh, it's using a rigorous uh, statistical technique uh, called OLS and uh, instrumental variable approach. And so this student is doing a uh, remarkable, very uh, remarkable and uh, uh, very interesting uh, research. And uh, he also used uh, uh, other conditions such as uh, uh, the temperature and uh, the weather, sunny or uh, windy. And also he controlled the, 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 the 
the characteristics of the team, such as height, weight, and average age, and so on. And uh, yeah, he tried to uh, identify uh, what actually uh, makes uh, uh, such advantage. I mean, I mean, advantage of being home team. So that's very interesting uh, research done by student. Yes, as you have seen, there actually undergraduate students are producing a lot of research results uh, here in the Fujita campus. And now we'd like to see some introduce you about the unique facilities at SFC. First of all, the, the FAF space and SBC. Bamita says, can you explain? But of course, you are using a lot. Sure. The, uh, I do use the FAF space uh, some. We have not only 3D printers and computer controlled sewing machines and paper cutters and, and devices that are capable of cutting thin pieces of wood, but we also have very large ones that are capable of cutting entire sheets of plywood and fabricating things. So for example, um, this, the, one of the students of one of the architecture professors several years ago designed a round stage for me that we then produced using the, the, uh, the 3D w or the wood fabrication facility, which we used uh, during a conference. So you can get access to these fa facilities um, as, as a student here. It's a, a great set of uh, tools and a great environment for, for any sort of work you want to conduct. And SBC, what is SBC? Uh, yes, SBC stands for Students Built Campus, which is an extremely unique uh, project because students actually participate in designing and building you know, these houses. So far, two houses have been finished and in use. So these houses combine a dormitory, kitchen, a dining room, and so on. And lots of classes have been, have been carried, carried out using these facilities. And students and professors often have deep discussion you know, overnight. Mm -hmm. Next to the SBC, there is something called Koebo House. C yes. do you, uh, can you explain a little bit about it? Okay, this house is called Coevolution House, which is an experimental future echo house located in SFC. The house incorporates renewable energy system, home automation, and environmentally friendly materials. So the house was designed to provide safe, comfortable, and healthy, healthy lifestyle, minimizing emission and energy consumption. The research team has been collecting various data using multiple sensors embedded in this house. And Wada Sensei, what is SFC Innovation Village? Okay, so this is, uh, this is called SFC IV. Uh, it's a collaboration between Keio University and the Kanagawa Prefecture, that's a local government, and the city of Fujisawa, and SMRJ, which is the organization that provides a business incubation service for uh, new business startup. Like I said, uh, lots of SFC students like to um, start a new business. Uh, yes, they are student, full-time student, but at the same time, they want to start a new business. So, university and the uh, local government want to help those people uh, start a new business and succeed. So, we have this kind of facility, and uh, this building has office rooms and meeting rooms, and the room for developing a trial product refreshing refreshing room and a kitchen and more and uh, uh, as a matter of fact SFC IV receives uh, more than 200, 200 consultation every year and allows students to talk with the staff anytime and the university and the local government really want to help students succeed in new business thank you very much then uh, we have seen a lot of the things uh, students can do in our campus and eventually they are going out to the society uh, after four years. Wada Sensei, can you talk about what KO graduates do after the, the e their study? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, like we explained, the KO University is the oldest uh, institution, higher education institution in Japan. And uh, many of KO graduates uh, are currently or former executives of those uh, world global co corporations. Uh, you might know Kirin and Kikoman. Kikoman is uh, a soy sauce shoyu company, and the Toyota, uh, which is automotive company, and uh, also Fuji Xerox and Seiko and so on and so forth. So many of those executives and the former executives are our KO graduate, and we are proud of it. 
and uh, yes, okay, so prominent KO SFC, our campus, uh, SFC graduate, uh, went to the b new business, but they just, uh, they didn't just go to the business and they founded or help, helped found new business such as Rakuten and Cookpad. Uh, these are uh, relatively new uh, companies, not so gigantic companies, and uh, not necessarily gigantic company, but uh, some of them are quite big, Rakuten. And uh, like I said, SFC graduate founded or helped to found those uh, uh, corporations. Okay. And a group yeah. of those faculty of, of those graduates actually will be coming to, to SFC next spring and, and conducting a, a class. You know, Fifteen graduates are going to be conducting class uh, each uh, one week talk, talking about their experiences. I'm really looking forward to that. And the student can get some inspiration or uh, like a uh, new idea. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that's what's going to happen next year. And uh, here, okay, uh, the typical SFC graduate um, uh, go to companies like this, uh, Toyota, uh, Google, uh, Goldman Sachs, and uh, Mizuho, or uh, those uh, well-known uh, big global corporations. Uh, they found a job, and uh, they got a job, and uh, they, they're working at those places. And the next one, okay, approximately 11% of our graduate uh, go on to study uh, the grad school for the advanced degree, and not only Japan, but also US and the top uh, world universities, Stanford, Princeton, Harvard, and UC Berkeley, and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, so after four years of undergraduate study at SFC, uh, if you really want to study, uh, uh, go on to study, uh, you can uh, go to those uh, top universities or uh, stay at Keio University and uh, you can go to uh, grad school here at Keio. Thank you very much, Wada sensei And uh, now we'd like to in, uh, invite some students, three students, GIGA students, and join us. And let's Vamita sensei to uh, handle this session. Sure. Hold on. We have, we have three, three of our uh, students coming in to join us. And um, we are going to let you have a chance to, to uh, hear from them directly so you can, uh, you can hear what their experiences are, are actually like. So let's start just with a, uh, a quick introduction. Um, Oyuma, why don't you start first? Just give us your uh, name, where you're at, what year you are, which faculty you're in, where you came from, and if you've joined uh, a Kinkyu Kai. Hello, my name is Ayuma, and I am a second year of policy management, and I'm from Mongolia, and I don't really have a kinky kai right now. Ibuki. Uh, hi, my name is Ibuki. I'm a third year of faculty of policy management, and I am Japanese, but I've lived in Thailand for high school, and I'm currently in the Hasebe Yoko Laboratory. Um, and uh, my name is Sayori Supov, and I'm from Uzbekistan. Uh, I'm in the Kenkyu Kai of con quantum computing. And what year student are you? Uh, I'm second year. Good. All right, let's take a look at some of, some of the uh, questions that, that we've got uh, for you all. First, tell me, what was the deciding factor for you in choosing uh, KO? Uh, why don't, Ibuki, why don't you start on this one? Um, one of the factor was that the KO University is one of the well-known university in Japan. Because I'm Japanese, I knew the university itself. And because I lived abroad, I wanted to study in, in English, but, but back in Japan. So this was one of the reasons why I chose the GIGA program. Well, Yuma, what about you? So in my high school, I studied, but studied about like Ch Japanese culture, Japanese literature, la Japanese history. So I was really close to Japan. But Did you take Japanese language too? No, no. no but okay. Uh, so you arrived with no Japanese ability? No, but just before I graduated, I took like three months of Japanese courses. Oh, okay. So yeah. And for deciding at K-University is that uh, K-University ambassadors came to my school. And from that on, I I was introduced to Giga program. And Giga program just spoke to me. So I chose K K Giga program. <laughs> Great. We're happy you're here. <laughs> right, so you are. Um, for me, uh, I was really looking for some uh, university where I could choose whatever I want to study and uh, K University w seemed to be the perfect university for that kind of studies because it's really free 
um, and uh, you can choose whatever uh, like course you want and you can start your research uh, from first year so that's what yeah you joined my re my kinku kai as a freshman right as yeah, a first yeah. year student <laughs> So how did you start looking for universities in Japan from Uzbekistan? We already heard how Oima got found in Japan. How did you decide that, that Japan was a place you wanted to look for a university? Um, actually, my family is pretty, um, like, has really good relationship with Japan mm -hmm. because my dad is, uh, being at university, has good uh, relationship with Nagoya University. Oh, okay. So he went to Japan a lot. And my brother, he graduated from Waseda University. Oh, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Waseda, ah, that word came up. Yes, this is the, uh, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, Waseda is uh, Keio's uh, biggest rival as, as the top private university in Japan. But the, uh, the English language programs that Keio offer, uh, offers are very complementary to the ones that, that Waseda is offering. So th I don't think they're really terribly, you know, not so much directly competitive in that sense. All right, let's go on to the next question. So... How did you adjust yourself from your country to Japan? Especially, how did you learn Japanese? Uh, Sayur, why don't you start with this one? Uh, well, actually, uh, I started learning Japanese uh, four years before I came here. Mm. So I was pretty accustomed to Japanese language. In and high school? Your high school had that? Uh, it was a Japanese center. Oh, okay. So I went aside from my high school mm -hmm. to a Japanese language course. Um, and I was really interested in... Uh, characters japanese characters like each character has its own meaning and uh um it was pretty easy for me to adjust to the to the life in japan so oh, you might, your experience is a little different right yeah it's a little bit different um from mongolia to japan it was a transition but i would say a smooth transition because i had everyone's help from the student life section and all from my senpais so yeah, but on the Japanese language, uh, Mongolia doesn't have a char characters in like like kanjis, so it was kind of hard. But I've gone through like a um, lot of uh, work. Uh, let me say like, um, well, everyday life we use Japanese in Japan. So from that on, I just learned like quickly. So yeah, but on academic level, I'm not really that great. But on everyday level, I don't have really any problem to connect with. Like daily basis, so. so so it was okay arriving having little or no Japanese language background. Yeah, it was here. totally okay because I had everyone's help, like on bank book account, from creating phone number and like uh, finding my accommodation. Everyone helped me, so I would say thank you. It's great, Ibuki. Any comments on on transitioning back to j back to Japan? I don't really have any comments on that because I've well. Number of year wise, I've lived in Japan longer mm. and I've had friends in Japan. But the problem was that it was the first time for me to live alone because my parents live outside of Kanagawa. So that was one of the transition I had to go through. Did the staff here at uh, SFC help you find uh, housing and things like that? Or did you do that? Oh, I did that by myself okay. because I was able to read the websites in Japanese. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's go on to the next question. <coughs> um, let's see. So. Uh, Ibuki, you're in Hasebeken, yes. right? What are you doing in your as, as part of your um, work in the Kenkyu Kai? Um, personally, I belong to the Global English Project, and that focuses on the English education. So we go to a middle school, junior high schools, or some elementary schools and teach English, like hold workshops and interact with the students there and provide like an international experience, I would say. And for students in the regular Japanese junior high schools, yes, just local yes, it's a public. Uh, we go to public and high. private Japanese schools, mm -hmm. so all the classes there are conducted in Japanese. But we hold our workshops in English, well, mm -hmm. mix of Japanese as well because they don't fully understand English. Right. And us, the university students, would conduct workshops that we are re we have a strength in. For example, I would do something about multiculturalism and looking back on your own culture because that's what I've experienced. And some of my friends does about music or dance or drama, mm. so something that they're strong with. Good, Sayor, I'm pretty familiar with your work, but why don't you tell the uh, tell our audience uh, about what you're working on? Um, <laughs> well, we our research is pretty broad, broad, I think, because we have so many fields like networking, cryptography, and uh, everything is uh, in part of our kenkyu guy, like. 
uh, everything connected to quantum properties and we try to study more so uh, myself i i don't really i didn't really choose the field of my study but i'm really working hard to understand the quantum technology uh, how it works how this quantum properties provide good like um, really fast uh, performance against classical computers and that's what I'm doing right now but I'm I'm really looking forward to find some uh, field which w which is really excited in quantum technology right so you've been working mostly on, on sort of background material for the for you've been with me now what a year already yeah so uh, the <laughs> background material for the first year, and now it's time for you to find a project and work on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, next uh, next slide. Um, tell us about your involvement in extracurricular activities or part-time work. Oh, you might, why don't you start on this one? Uh, for extracurricular activities, I am a GES um, club, which where we like play our favorite sports on every Wednesday night. What is GES? Is that it, does that mean anything or is it just the GES? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> she just told me GES. So yeah, I just wanted to like work like work on myself and like have a time for myself. So I joined mm. that so we can play sports and take care of her health. And for part time work, I'm currently working at working for um, English teacher teaching English to uh, kindergarten kids, which is really pretty cute. Um, so yeah, that's <laughs> I'll bet they are very cute. And <laughs> yeah, Ko students in general are, are highly sought after by by parents and schools as tutors for for, for yeah. young kids who want to uh, potentially to come on to Ko for for a university level. So a lot of our students actually do work as tutors for math or or uh, English or wha or whatever uh, whatever as they go. Ibuki, what about you? Uh, for extracurricular activity, I am part of the Association for International Students, and I'm currently the president. And it is a circle that aims to improve the GIGA program, first of all. And the second is to uh, come up with events, plan events, and hold them to have a place for s students in SFC to bond together. And the part-time job, I do uh, English tutoring as well, but online. And also, I'm a sales clerk at department stores. So the AIS has actually been a big help for for helping with the, with uh, the incoming Giga students right right at the start of their freshman year. We really appreciate everything you guys do <laughs> for everybody. Sayor, what about you? Uh, for a part time job, I um, I do a homework checking, so it's like uh, held totally online, and um, students submit their homeworks, and I just need to check online. And uh, Are these Japanese students or high school yeah. students or college um, students or, or uh it's not a specific uh category but anybody can um can submit ah, okay. and it's like checking in japanese ah okay well, interesting <laughs> <I'm butter there>. <laughs> 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 all right uh next question let's see what do we have um, do you have, yeah, this is a good one. So what's sort of your advice to the people who are listening, who are trying to decide whether or not to actually come to uh, SFC or apply to the Giga, Giga program? Um, sorry, why don't you start with this one? Um, well, uh, first of all, I think uh, bring up your passion about whatever you want to study. And... Um, it's really all about your motivation and Everyth everything else is uh, right here like everything beginning from um, 3D printers and laser cutters uh, to facilities for self-study to research centers um, and uh, stuff everything is for you so you just need to bring your motivation and passion that's all Oyuma, what about you? Um, I would say Right after I graduated high school, I didn't really know who I would become. So uh, I chose Giga because it was such a universal school. Like we can learn from music, art, science, social studies and everything. So I chose Giga. So I would say if you're not sure about who you will who you want to become, so ju just choose Giga program and come here and study and um, search yourself and just, yeah there and 
be who you want to be here. Great. Ibuki, you're the senior student here. You get the last word. <laughs> I was going to do the same, same thing as Oyuma. I, one of the uniqueness I would feel, uh, uh, I think about uh, SFC is that there's a, little, there's a really small number of mandatory classes, and you can choose any classes you want at SFC. And it, it doesn't need to be only the faculty you're in. You can mix and match whatever you want to study. And so I didn't know what I wanted to uh, study because uh, I couldn't like, decide if I wanted to do economics or education. So the reason why I chose here is more there's a wide range Wada of Wada sensei, you lost out to Hasebe sensei on that one. <laughs> Okay, good. Thank you all. All right, let's see. So what's next on our agenda here? Back to you, Hagino yes. Sensei. See, can you explain about some student life at SSC or some events? Oh, oh, let's see. Let's get one of the students to comment on this. Anybody want to comment on Tanabata Sai or, or, or the fireworks or, or the uh, SFC Akisai, the Fall Fa Festival? Yeah, go ahead. So the Tanabata Sai and fall, the Fall Festival Akimatsuri are conducted by students. There's a Jikko Inc., like an organization that organizes the events. And not only they organize the whole thing, but all the circles would have their own booth up and provide food stalls or like maybe sell s things that they, they make. And not only I'm in AIS, I'm also a part of the softball circle and the volleyball circle. And with that, I was involved in the school festivals and we sold Frankfurt's and also we did Yakitori. Wow, okay. Yeah. Good. Those are two of the, the you know the fun events for for the uh, students during during the course of the year, but there are other events during the year as well. Yeah. All right. Sensei, now we'd like to move on to the Q and the sessions, and uh, we have several questions we received beforehand, and uh, let's see one by one. First is about contents and general information. First one: What is the average class size of introductory co classes? What what sensei, why don't you take this one? Yes, I would say approximately 50 or 60 at most. And the uh, upper level, uh, for example, my class, international finance, uh, I have a little bit above 30 students. So uh, it, it's fairly small, and it's not comparable to the US universities, typical universities, which has more than like 300 to 400 students in class. So, so you have uh, you have opportunity to uh, do like uh, um, the discussion and the asking question uh, without any hesitation. So that's my answer. Okay. Then the second question is: Is there a core curriculum, English or history, in math or science requirement? Or Akiyama Akiyama sensei, you want to take this one? I think we have some uh, requirements classes in first and second year. For example, the programming is a requirement for the the, f the faculty, uh, the students of faculty of environment and information studies, and also foreign languages are uh, requirements. But otherwise, uh, students has a wide choice of um, taking, you know, th whatever they would like to. Is that correct? <laughs> yes, uh, compared to the other, I mean, faculties of the university, I think w our core curriculum is quite kind of condensed or was very short one, but, but yeah, very important, yeah. It's a very free-form curriculum. Yeah. Uh, so the, uh, at a lot of universities, most universities you would go, you would have, have a basic science requirement, which you could fulfill by taking physics or chemistry or biology or, mm. or what have you. At SFC, that core science is computer science. And w so data all science. freshmen yeah, ta data take... Data take a, a class called the Fundamentals of Information Technology. And right. importantly, the P, uh, the g uh, gym class, you know, the, the physical, physical education, education. Physical yeah. education <laughs> is a requirement, you know, which is kind of unique nowadays in Japanese university, I think. I think even a lot of American universities have been gradually eliminating it. With may or may not yeah, be we have a lot, so good. a lot of PE yeah. classes like golf or uh, the lot of fun things, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nice... Um, the, uh, yeah, so the, uh, the one other thing that you have to take, so, so if, is math included? At SFC, the math classes, we call those uh, data science classes. And the minimum number of data science classes and the minimum number of computer science classes is actually pretty small. Um, what are you all taking for your data science classes, or did you take for, for to fulfill the basic data science requirements? Ibuki? Um, I took statistics class for data science one, and I took a Japanese course 
for data science too. A Japanese course for? Yeah, because I'm fine with taking Japanese. Oh, you mean you? I thought you meant you took a Japanese language class. No, no, no. A class held in Japanese. Japanese. Yeah. Japanese. 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 Okay. I don't know how th- I I would put that in English. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if that one's actually offered in English. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, Oyama, what are you doing for data science classes? I haven't taken any data science, but you haven't yet? the next semester I will definitely. Yeah. Sayor. Um, for data science, I took linear algebra and uh, calculus, mm-hmm. and for data science too, I already took optimization theory. Yeah, the uh, optimization theory. Uh, I taught that a couple of years ago, and Professor Alno teaches teaches it now, and I love it. I had to learn a whole lot in order to, to do it, so it's a lot of fun. It's sort of a combination of computer science and, and mathematics in, in that particular class, which is why it's called data science rather than mathematics, right? And uh, the fun part of this class was that we could also simulate a lot of um, mathematical models on the actual machine, like on Mathematica, called a program called Mathematica. So the professor provided very practical approach towards learning. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Yeah, it's very hands-on. And can we move on to the next question? The how many classes does the average student take per semester? Yes, anybody? Yes, students, yes. How many of you are you all taking? I'm taking 18 classes. 18 uh, units? 18 18 credits. Yeah, 18 credits. credits. That means nine classes. Nine. Yeah, nine classes. The typical yeah. course here in, in our unitating system, a typical course is two credits. So if you say you're taking 18, that generally means you're taking nine classes, right? Yeah. Not a lot, but you can push push up yourself and get the best. Ibuki? No. I used to take 10 classes for the first two years, but now that I'm in the third year, I think I take seven or eight okay. classes. Sayor? For me, I every semester I took uh, ten classes. So ten's the upper limit no, normally. You know, twenty units is the normal upper mm-hmm. limit. At Japanese universities in general, in our campus in particular, each class is generally a smaller unit of uning, un, smaller unit of learning than it would be at a uh, U.S. university. So, so eight to ten classes is is a typical load. Whereas in university units, it w- in American universities, it would typically be four or five. So, each class is smaller, and it means over the course of your four years, you'll take more of them to complete a, a similar r- amount of learning. Thank you. Maybe next question is for Wada Sensei. For business courses, are there any unique opportunity for students? Uh, well, uh, so yeah, and uh, not my my class, but uh, yeah, some other professor uh, offer uh, the courses that involves uh, internship, I believe, and uh, um, and also uh, some courses. Uh, uh, allow students to use uh, some computation or something, it's, uh, which is basically the simulation of uh, the, the financial market. And uh, it's like uh, imaginary uh, investing opportunity. So y- suppose you have uh, the one million yen and how much you spend on this uh, stock. Or s- uh, so And uh, at the end of the semester, uh, how much money you can make. So that's all. Uh, uh, no, no real money thing. So, <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, so yeah. Uh, yeah but but that's a really uh, interesting opportunity to learn how market works, how financial market works. So that's the uh, uh, I think that's the answer. Do you since you're an econometrist, so you you study you you measure the economy and study the economy itself, right? Do yeah, yes, I do. Do your yes. students either through your courses or your th- kenkyukai meet? people in the government who are involved in managing the economy or creating policies or uh, anything like that? Or, well, d- or so do other s- unique things like that? Uh, yeah, sometimes I I invite uh, guest speakers to my seminar. Uh, yeah. Not my course yet, but uh, my, my seminar. And uh, one, uh, oh, it's a couple of examples, a c- uh, couple of opportunities. So once I invited the, uh, uh, the person who who was working for the, the bank, mm-hmm. big bank, and who is uh, doing some sort of uh, infrastructure investment, not only in Japan, but also the uh, emerging economies. Mm. And uh, he was talking about uh, how uh, money uh, they get in Japan uh, go to uh, investment in other countries, such as emerging economies, such as uh, um, the China or India. And I think that's a unique opportunity for a student to learn the real world. Good. 
And the uh, next question is about what are the student abroad programs like? Or is there any, what, do you know? Uh, anybody who, uh, Akiyama Sensei, can you explain about it? Well, I think students have uh, quite a few choices of the destination, and the GIGA students actually can join the study abroad program. And currently, I think our GIGA students are joining one of the exchange program. Yeah, we a number of the students from the Giger program have gone. One of the uh, one of the founders of the AI, AI, AIS that Ibuki is now the president of, he's just on his way back from a year at uh, UC San Diego, I believe, yeah, right? Uh, he's already back. This semester he just got yeah. back, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's and one of my students spent a year abroad at the University of uh, Maryland. Uh, so it's it's fairly common. We have uh, a couple hundred universities, I think, that we have exchange programs with. Um, you can go for one or two semesters. I think tip two is the most most uh, common, and uh, typically it would be around your third year, either the latter half of your second and first half of your third, or all of your third year. You would be gone. Would be the most common time to go. Uh, we actually over the time, so maybe we may skip some of the slides or questions. Uh, we of, of course we are going back to you about all the questions, and maybe more important one maybe. About admissions, maybe. Uh, first question is about what is the evaluation result based on? Does anybody can answer? Well, we're here. really looking, we really want to, to look into your eyes and see, is there something you want to do to make the world a better place? Are, are you going to be the kind of person who's actually going to change the planet in some, some positive way? Um, is there some sort of fire in your, in your, in your, in your eyes that, that makes you want, want to do something in particular? Those kinds of students and students who are interested very much in the impact of technology on society or the merger of, of technology and society and how society is changing, those are the kinds of students that, that we're, we're really looking for. And second one is about IB diploma. Of course, we uh, accept as the IB diploma, I think, one of the standardized tests. If you're in an IB program, we love to see your IB scores. Yes, uh, uh, and about the English requirement, TOEIC or AKEN, whatever is possible. And if you're taught in English in high school, you don't need to uh, submit. Yeah. Right. If your high school is in English, you don't have to submit an English uh, test score like that. If your high school is not in English, you do. And For the GIGA program, um, the requirements for some other programs are different. Yeah. And the uh, fourth one, the, is it possible to apply for the GIGA program after completing a BSS degree? Well, so no, that no. would mean after you, after you finish a basic undergraduate degree at, a, at another university. Um, the GIGA program itself is for undergraduates. And so in that sense, the typical answer would be no. But <laughs> if you really wanted to get a second bachelor's degree, it's probably possible. But I think actually maybe your question is more about graduate school. And we the have. graduate school, you know, we have graduate school programs that cover, you can work with the same set of faculty on these topics. Of course, it would be at a more advanced level in, in, in the uh, graduate school than at an undergraduate level. And you are welcome to come join our graduate school, even if you speak not a single word of Japanese. Uh, right now, about 25% of our graduate students are uh, non-Japanese. And uh, about admission, the fifth one is, are standard test score required to be submitted? We don't require them because we're getting applicants from Mongolia and Uzbekistan and Thailand and, and every place else on the planet, and there's not a single test that, that could really apply to everybody. If you have standardized test scores, whether they're IB or SAT or ACT or from your home country, these are particularly the Gaokao from, from, from China or, or, or something similar, if you can get them by the deadline, we like to have those. If you don't, we're, we're, we're accommodating on that because we understand that, that what, you can, what you can actually achieve, what you can get your, your hands on as a high school student varies from country to country. And next one is about what kind of information should I include in th my three minutes video? Or is video editing allowed? Or yeah, what have you done? Yes, you, you three. Yeah. Any, anybody? Uh, in my video, I think I've, ta I've told basically about my whole life. And I've also included photos from my extracurricular activities and like volunteering that I've done in high school. S and so I did edit the video. It was not a one take. I t took shots of like the parts I wanted to speak and I also included photos over it. It's important for us to see your face actually speaking yes. in English though. Mm -hmm. I mean, we need to see that. So mm -hmm. it's not just voiceover mm -hmm. of some PowerPoint or something mm -hmm. like that because you know, the uh, part mm -hmm. of what we're doing is assessing your ability to speak English mm -hmm. and if we can't see you speaking that we don't know it's you, right? Yeah. 
So half the part I spoke to the camera, half the part I did a voice voiceover. That's probably fun. Your case? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I I mainly talked to the camera. I didn't edit anything, so it's it was just like a one shot <laughs> with my father. <laughs> yeah, and I tried to include everything I did on the on the board behind me, so they so the uh, people can see the pictures and what I did before my high school. Yeah, that was about me. Yeah, you don't have to go hire a uh, professional video crew and <laughs> makeup artist and lighting and, and uh, um, get background music and everything. You know, the point is really for us to get to get a feel for, for you. That's really what we're trying to achieve there. And we're running out of time. That ra this will be the last question. <laughs> what do people normally do for the freestyle session? Yes, of the application? That is? For the application, yes. What did you do, Sayo? Um, I basically wrote about myself, what uh, my passions are, where which uh, fields I want to study, and I included several pictures of myself and uh, my classes, and uh, that's about it. There are two pages, I guess. Up to two pages, you can freely write anything. Or Oima? I talked about very personal life and what I really think of myself and what I can do to the world. So yeah, it was such an emotional and like a raw <laughs> essay. <laughs> <laughs> and Ibuki, you get the last word on this one too. Well, since the essay and the video was a requirement, I wanted to do something else. So I made like an infographic post poster or flyer like thing. So it was more like a visual thing that I could express myself with. That's a good idea. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Uh, we ran out of time. This the thank you very much, everybody, for uh, joining today. And uh, the last rest will be this one. And there's a deadline. So please remember about uh, the submission deadline coming very soon uh, from December 10th and so on. So we are expecting you for your application. So thank you very much for today for joining us. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you to all the students and the other faculty. And we'll look forward to seeing you all here next yeah. September.